You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It's Tuesday. I started to say it's Monday, but it's Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely, yes, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday, November 10th, and uh, tomorrow is November 11th, and we observe Veterans Day here in the United States, and we're mm-hmm. very thankful for those who have served so faithfully and uh, and, and, and served so dutifully as well. And we have the opportunity to talk with one of the newest veterans uh, among us. So looking forward to sharing that story with you today. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for your support of the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, Chaplain Eric Malmstrom, Navy retired, and I believe that retired uh, addition to his uh, his title just happened yesterday or just in the last <laughs> couple of days, if I remember correctly. Chaplain Melstrom, thanks so much for joining us today. Good morning. So I- am I right? Is, was your retirement just in the last couple of days? It, it was. I had my retirement ceremony uh, last Friday. And uh, in, in military terms, I, I started what we call terminal leave. And it, it sounds awful, but what it means is that I'm on leave until I'm I'm officially retired, which will be uh, March 1st. Aha. Uh-huh. So so you're on terminal leave. So that, that doesn't make you officially retired then yet. Okay. So I could follow that. I got to learn all these military terms. Well, uh, we speak our own language for sure. <laughs> Uh, chaplain, share with us, how did you find your way to serving as a chaplain? Well, that, that's a, a great question, and it's, um, it's not a straight line for sure. Um, I remember uh, I started off uh, in, in college out at, uh, it used to be Christ College Irvine, uh, now Concordia Irvine, and I, I remember reading an article back then. It was, it was an article in the Lutheran Witness about a guy by the name of, uh, of Garricky. Uh, Chaplain Garricky, uh, and he was the the chaplain to all of the all of the war criminals in Nuremberg. Uh, the, there's a recently uh, published book about that mission at Nuremberg, and I remember reading that article and thinking, "Oh my goodness, that's uh, that's a pretty profound way of uh, or pretty profound story of preaching the gospel of Christ to uh, to those that the most need it uh, and those that are." Uh, who sinned greatly for sure, uh, and, and that kind of went in the back of my mind. Uh, but I went on to uh, to enlist in the Navy, uh, served uh, as a, a nuclear electrician for about six years. I was on submarines, uh, an old 594 boat, the, the USS Paddock. Um, and when I got out, uh, I was kind of floundering around trying to figure out where to go. And I, I went to a church. Uh, it wasn't an LCMS church. It was a uh, it was an ELCA church, uh, but it was Easter Sunday. Uh, remember it vividly. Uh, the sermon was terrible. Uh, the sermon was, was all about puppies and kittens and gardens and new life, and, and he didn't mention the resurrection once. Uh, so I was, I was fuming. I was furious. Uh, and it was like a slap across the forehead uh, that said, well, knucklehead, go off to the seminary and make sure that people hear the gospel on Easter Sunday. Uh, so went off to, uh, to Concordia, Irvine, and when I first showed up, everybody said, hey, you'd make a great Navy chaplain, and I said, no way. Uh, I just got done with six years, I'm not going back to the Navy, not going back to the military, want nothing to do with it. Uh, so, so kind of put that out of my mind. Uh, went off to the seminary at Fort Wayne, uh, where I met uh, one of the professors there. Uh, he was, a, I think, a young lieutenant, maybe a lieutenant commander, uh, who was uh, one of the professors there, uh, Dan Gard, and he pestered me every single day uh, until I finally gave in to him and, uh, and went off to chaplain school in 98. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how my, my path went. Uh, then when I, when I went to the parish, uh, I ended up uh, serving on the reserve side. Uh, I served with the 3rd Battalion, 25th Marines uh, on the reserve side. Uh, that was back in 2005, uh, included some time in Iraq. Uh, and following that, I went back on active duty. So it, it certainly wasn't a straight line to uh, to get me on board as a chaplain. Uh, it took a lot of twists and turns along the way. Mm-hmm. 
Well, thank you for your service and for all of those years of uh, sharing the gospel with our, our servicemen and women uh, who, who do so need to hear that when they're on the battlefield. Who oh, were welcome. some of the... <laughs> Who are some of the people you mentioned, uh, Dan Gard? He's a wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, who are some of the other people that were instrumental in guiding you along this this very curvy path? Let's see. John Woolrobby was another one. Um, he was one that I, I served with. Uh, I was with the CBs for a bit, and uh, and he was my, my supervising chaplain, Um and then when I was I was trying to decide whether to go back on active duty or not, and he was he was my supervisor once again. I got a call from what we call the the detailer. He's the the person he or she is a person that that tells us uh, what our next job is going to be. And and they said we they wanted to send me to Dahlgren, Virginia. And I thought, what do I really want to go to Dahlgren, Virginia? Where the heck is it? What what's this what's this about? <laughs> And I was I was praying about it, and in about thirty seconds after I got off the phone from uh, from the detailer, uh, John Woolrobbie called me up and said, "You need to go active duty because I need you here. Uh, you'd be a great person for this billet, and and we really need you here." Uh, so he was he was a great mentor for me, um, as well as uh, Greg Todd. Uh, he's been a, a great great mentor for me uh, throughout the years and, and helped me and encouraged me uh, in many ways. Uh, so I've had a, a number of mentors who've helped me out quite a bit. Hmm. Well, you've shared already a, a couple of stories in the ways in which you were given to serve in the armed forces. Uh, do, do you have more stories to share with us? I mean, that's what that's what we want to hear today, the, the stories of, of your service and, and uh, what you learned along the way. Oh, oh, absolutely! Lots, lots of stories of service. Um, one of the, uh, again, talking to the detailer when I was coming on board uh, on the reserve side, uh, I called him up and said, "What, what do you have?" And he said, "Well, I've got, uh, I've got a Marine Corps billet for you, Third uh, Battalion, Twenty Fifth Marines." Uh, and I said, "Well, what else do you have?" And he said, "Well, I've got Third Battalion, Twenty Fifth Marines." I said, is there anything else? And he said, yeah, I've got 3rd Battalion, 25th Marines. Uh, so I said, well, I, I suppose I'll take that one. Um, and he said, well, you'll love it. They're these, these cold-weather ninjas. I hope you like uh, cross-country skiing. You're going to be going to Norway. You're going to do all kinds of cool things. And I said, oh, that, that sounds wonderful. So uh, I showed up um, and, and asked him about this cold-weather ninja stuff, and they looked at me like I had three heads. And they said, Jeff, we're going to Iraq. Uh, we're we're not going any place cold. We're going to Iraq. Um, so uh, I don't know if you remember 2005. That was a, you know, military terms. It was a very kinetic time then. Um, we were the the hardest hit uh, Marine Reserve Battalion uh, out of the entire Iraq War. Uh, we we took 48 casualties, 48 KIA, um, and and several hundred wounded uh, while we were there. Uh, so it was it was a, a pretty intense time, um, and a, a crucial time to uh, to have the gospel uh, for a lot of these these guys. Uh, the you know the the Easter Sunday there, um, there there were some that was that was the last word of of God that they heard uh, before they uh, before they they met Christ. Um, so it was it was pretty humbling, uh, pretty pretty moving to to think about that. Uh, in, in hindsight, that that so many of these guys, you know, and that's what I learned in seminary. Uh, one of the things Dr. Gard used to always teach us was preach every sermon thinking that this is the last gospel that somebody's going to hear because you never know. And and that was that was certainly the case uh, that that many of these these guys that was the last time they heard the gospel. Um, but it was. Well, lot, lots of uh, you know emotional scars that come from from that kind of service, um, but but also a privilege from from being there. Uh, there were you know, one of the probably one of the more difficult times. We we took a couple times where it was what we call the mass casualty. Uh, the the first one was uh, was quite a doozy. I think we lost uh, five guys that day, uh, but it was the Saturday before Mother's Day. And, you know, I remember, you know, praying over their remains 
um, putting them in, in body ba- body bags, uh, identifying who they were, and uh, putting them on a helicopter to send them home. And uh, I just remember thinking, you know, my, my gosh, these, these five moms are going to wake up tomorrow to the worst Mother's Day of their lives. So it's, um, it, it's sometimes a, a pretty difficult ministry uh, that we that we deal with. Um, so from from there, you know, the the next worst one, I, I think we lost 14 guys in one one incident. There was a, a track that was uh, that was hit by a mine, uh, and that was that was another very difficult time as well. You know, trying to figure out what do you say to the to the one guy that survived the, the whole thing. There was there was one guy out of a whole squadron that that survived that, and, and trying to figure out what what do you say to somebody like that, and thinking, you know, wow, you know, I'm, I'm way out of my league here. I have uh, you know no idea what what to do because um, I'm still reeling myself from everything. Uh, and it, it was interesting that you know at that time, one of my parishioners, one of my former parishioners, you know, happened to send me a letter. And it's, you know, it takes a couple of weeks for those things to, to come around. So she had no idea any of this stuff happened. But um, she sent me this letter that said, isn't it great, Pastor, that out of all the pastors in all time, in all places, that God sent you there to be with these guys? And it was it was just that uh, that encouragement that I needed at that time uh, to, to help these help these guys through it. Uh, to help them kind of navigate these these really difficult muddy waters, uh, along with trying to process, okay, how do you, well, how do you how do you talk to somebody who's uh, going to go out and, and kill somebody? You know, how do you talk to these sniper teams that are getting ready to go out and and take out bad guys? And what do you do with that? Uh, it's it's a hard thing um, to, to kind of know how to navigate those muddy waters and be able to give them the peace of Christ uh, and give them the assurance of the gospel as they go out to do these, these terrible things. Mm-hmm. All of oh, these. And, and from, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I, I was going to say, I, I've got lots and lots of other stories as well. Um, so I went on from there to uh, ended up at Walter Reed eventually. Uh, so went into the hospital ministry side of things. Uh, so got to talk to a lot of people that were, Went from there were a few World War II vets, some Korean vets, some uh, you know Vietnam vets, as, as, as well as the the more current uh, people that were that were suffering injuries. Uh, so I got to talk to a lot of a lot of people. So there's certainly no shortage of stories. Absolutely. And we would love to hear more, uh, but we have to take a quick break. We are talking with Chaplain Eric Malmstrom, U.S. Navy, uh, recently retired. We will come back right after the break with more stories. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. Our listeners and supporters are talking about Worldwide KFUO. Yeah, I think your programming is just wonderful. I love the emphasis on the traditional tunes rather than the modern music. Keep up the good work. Thank you. To leave a message on the KFUO comment line, call 314-996-1542. That's 314-996-1542. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Worldwide KFUO. How do I keep my kids in church? Will there still be a church for them to go to? New people have moved into my neighborhood. How do I reach out to them? Our challenges are many, but it is Jesus who makes disciples for life through his church. Let's come together as the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod to discuss this joyful work. Learn more about the Making Disciples for Life initiative at lcms.org slash making disciples. Again, that's lcms.org slash making disciples. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, on behalf of Concordia Plan Services, Lutheran Housing Support Corporation, Concordia University System, Lutheran Church Extension Fund, the LCMS Foundation, and Corporate Synod, daily reaches out to our members and partners, working together to support our local, global, and international ministries, church workers, 
and LCMS initiatives at large to carry the mission forward and to serve each other in love. Opportunities to serve, lcms.org slash careers. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with Chaplain Eric Malmstrom, uh, Navy retired and uh, recently retired and uh, sharing uh, just stories that uh, for me listening as someone who's never served in the military, someone who's never been in combat, th these stories really humanize mm -hmm. the, the just the, the the harsh things that that one has to face the, the harsh realities one faces in in combat and in, in service to your country. Um, and I'm sure the days that you described sound like some of the most difficult days of your your career and your life. What was what, what would you say was the most rewarding uh, times of your career in the Navy? Well, there's, um, again, lots of rewarding times as well. Um, one of the one of the, the Marines that I served, uh, he was a. Uh, he was a Lutheran, and um, I, I came rolling into one of these these locations out in the middle of nowhere, and, and you could still smell the, the gunpowder. You could see the results of a of a gun battle that had taken place. Uh, you know, they were. You could see the bad guys picking up. Uh, you know, what, what was left of, of some of their buddies and, and things like that as they as they retreated. Um, and, I, and I came rolling into this location. And this, this Marine covered in, in muck and mire, he came up to me and said, Chaps, is there any way we can we can have communion? And mm -hmm. I just just happened to have a communion set. Um, so I, I grabbed some, uh, there were some ammo cans um, and made a little makeshift altar where I was, pulled out my, my combat communion kit and offered communion to these, these Marines right after a, a gun battle. Uh, that that event was was so meaningful for him that he ended up going off uh, to, to seminary and is now serving as a chaplain himself. Uh, so, so just just knowing that and seeing that play out over the years was uh, was pretty incredible and a very very rewarding, very um, uh, profound uh, impact of that. I didn't even realize it at the time. You know, I, I just I did what pastors normally do. I offered word and sacrament. But because of where that was and because of the timing, that had such a, a profound impact on that young man that, that he's carried that with him, you know, even today. Uh, definitely one of, the, one, one of the prouder moments for sure. Uh, and and lots, of, uh, lots of other very small ones, just, uh, just very meaningful, gosh, meaningful interactions with, um, with some of the folks out at Walter Reed. Um, and, and they kind of all blend together now, uh, but but just sitting down and, and talking with people, you know, while they're while they're hurting and giving them that 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 salve of the gospel was was very very satisfying to be able to do that. Um, I know one of the the really neat uh, neat stories, you know, after you've been in for a while, you kind of get you know a big network. And I had uh, I was serving with the Coast Guard, and one of the members called me up. Uh, she was she was in Las Vegas because her father was dying, and he was he was moments from death. And she said, "Chaplain, I can't get any any chaplain come in to to talk with me. Can you help me?" And so I'm I'm out in Virginia at the time, so I, I find the number for a, a chaplain who's who's out in Las Vegas. Uh, one of the I think it was an Air Force base that was out there. Got a hold of their duty chaplain, and within 30 minutes. Uh, I had a chaplain there at her bedside, you know, meeting with her and her father. Uh, and he was a Catholic priest, and he ended up doing the the funeral mass for them. But but again, one of those those real proud moments and very satisfying moments that even from across the country, I could provide you know pastoral care for one of my one of my flock. Because uh, we have a it's kind of a, a a unique arrangement where we say we used to say cooperation with compromise. Uh, which I think is a, a good motto for the chaplain corps, where, where I don't have to, I don't have to be a priest, I don't have to be a rabbi, 
But what I need to do is contact that rabbi, contact that priest, and have them take care of their member. Uh, and then if they're not there, then, then I take care of them the best way I can. But in a situation like that, from even across the country, I could, I could reach out to a fellow chaplain and, and have somebody there within 30 minutes was, was pretty incredible to be able to offer something like that to, to somebody in need. Mm-hmm. And all of all of these stories have illustrated uh, just how important this this work is. Uh, what what does it mean for service members uh, who are both deployed and stateside uh, to have this access to the sacraments and to the Word of God through chaplains like you? Well, well that, that's that, that is a great question, and that's that's something that's asked quite often. Because uh, chaplains are, well, we're 100% confidential. And so you, you have people that reach out to us who, who may have no religious affiliation at all. They, they may not even be a person of faith, but they know that the chaplain is a person to talk to uh, who has that open door, who's a confidential resource, and can offer peace and perspective. But for a lot of our, our people, they're Actually, they're away from home, uh, they're away from family and friends, uh, often for the first time, and they really need somebody that, that can be there for them, that can listen to them, uh, that can comfort them, that can offer word and sacrament to them. Uh, they, they really, really need that. Because uh, you, you take, for example, somebody who grew up in, in Iowa, and now they find themselves in, in Virginia, uh, and they just can't get home to be with the pastor, to be with the family, but they, they need somebody, uh, and they need that, that gospel, and they need that, that sacrament. Uh, they need those things, uh, and they, they come to realize that because life in the military is hard, uh, and they, they face some, some really harsh things all the time. Uh, I'm reminded of, uh, of my, my Coast Guard brothers and sisters that you, know, you, you think of the Coast Guard, and you think, oh, that's, that's a nice, safe service. Uh, but they're they're going out in some pretty pretty rough conditions. Going out in the middle of hurricanes, you're going out to some of these these fishing vessels, and and the accidents are they're they're really bad accidents when they do happen, uh, and they they have a lot to to try to process because they're they're recovering bodies. They're they're doing things that are that are pretty pretty difficult to do, and they need that comfort. They need that that peace. That, that Christ offers to them. They need that reassurance of, of everlasting life, that these things matter. You know, as, as we talk about in the, you know, in the one-year series coming up this, this Sunday, where we talk about the, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me also, that, mm-hmm. that they're out there doing that each and every day when they don't realize the importance of, of what they're doing. So we can, we can bring that, uh, that peace to them. And even even our senior members, uh, I, I had a the admiral that I served with uh, in the fifth district uh, of, of Coast Guard District Five. We would meet once a month, and we would sit down for an hour, and we would we would talk about the, the struggles that he was having, and we would talk about family, and we would talk about Coast Guard things, and we would talk about uh, world events, and we would talk about everything. But he he needed that uh, that sounding board. He needed somebody to just sit and talk with that uh, that wasn't going to judge, that wasn't going to uh, you know, point a finger at him, but you know maybe gently nudge him in one direction or another, or reassure him that he was going in the right path. Uh, but but even our senior members, they need that uh, because you know, as we we think about the mental health uh, aspect of military service, mm-hmm. uh, it, it affects everybody. It affects all ranks. Uh, so they, they need that person to, to talk with. Uh, they need that person to offer them hope. And that brings us to a good point. We have just about a minute and a half left, Chaplain. But uh, for those of us uh, lay people in the congregations, how can we be supportive of our veterans? What should we know are the things we should do or not do as we want to recognize and support our veterans in the congregations around us? Well, that, that's a great question. Um, because you know, one of the worst questions you can ask somebody, you know, when they, they come back from you know Iraq or Afghanistan, is to say, "Hey, did you kill anybody? What was it like to kill people?" You know, that's 
that that's a pretty awful question to ask. Um, so so please don't do that. Refrain from that uh, because that's um, that's a pretty private thing. But to just be there to, to talk with them and ask them to tell those stories, tell those sea stories. You know, just just be available for them uh, and realize that they may have done some things that that they're not proud of that they struggle with. So to be an open ear, to listen to them, to, to listen to their stories. And they'll share with you as, as you feel comfortable. Uh, as, as they feel comfortable sharing those stories, they'll, they'll let you in as, as far as they, they feel comfortable. Um, but, but just listen. Uh, encourage them to tell their stories. Encourage them to, to talk about their time in the service. Uh, and if they don't want to talk about it, don't, don't press them. Don't, don't push them. Uh, because it's it's some pretty private stuff uh, that a lot of our our service members are carrying with them. Uh, so so just be mindful of that, but encourage them, talk with them, uh, you know, celebrate uh, you know Veterans Day and Memorial Day, and, and realize that those are two totally different holidays. Uh, <laughs> but but just talk with them and, and listen to their stories. Our guest today, Chaplain Eric Malmstrom, recently retired from the U.S. Navy. Chaplain Malmstrom, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Well, you're welcome, and God's blessings to you. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.